La, 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 la. So, welcome back. Today we are going to go through a couple of new topics and the most important topic today will be our market hour. So please open your R studios, open your R studio. And let's first uh, open your R studio and open the project that you created for this, for this class. File recent projects and this project. File recent projects and for me it's in trottoir and I'm opening it, opening it again. This will mean that we do not have to deal with all these working directories. We know that there is one folder where all our project stuff is together. Now today, what I want to show you is our markdown. If you have looked at my at my uh, these materials, course materials, then these are all done in our markdown. These are done all in our studio. But I want to show you a couple of more things what you can do in so these materials, course materials, which you which you all have access to. They are made in our studio. I have I have not edited them in anywhere else than our studio. You can add graphs. You can add every every kind of stuff here. So, but when I when I work in R, here is another here is another uh, report in Estonian flow that I have made in our studio. All the graphs, everything. When I work in R, then I I tend to do all my reports in our studio. So that I write the text, then I write some code, then I write some text, then I write some R code, and then I press one button and out comes the report. And when the data is changed, you know, then I just run this button again and it creates all my graphs and all my numbers inside the code and not in code, but all the numbers inside the text and it, it, it recreates them. Or in my current work, what I do, I, I do, I work in e-residency where, where, where Estonia is taking in, is, is providing electronic residency to people. This does not mean real residency, it does not give you a right, right to arrive in Estonia, but it gives you an identity card with what you can use the public services of Estonia. For example, you can create a company in Estonia in, 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 in 15 minutes pretty much when you have this card and you can if you need a business then you see i have my e-residency t-shirt t-shirt on me right now and i am actually in my office right now so uh, it provides you an identity card which which allows you to, to sign documents to, to give digital signatures which are as strong as every as a usual signature in Estonia. So you can create a company in Estonia, you can run a company in Estonia without without ever stepping into Estonia. If you like an European Union company, then this is the way to go. So for example, I create automatically with our studio this kind of this kind of reports every month. This is for example for India. And it, it gives it gives you that it tells you that by July 1st we have 3,800 Estonian e-residents who have citizenship of India. This is 4% of Estonian e-residents, and 2,800 who are living in India, who are residents of India, is 3% of Estonian e-residents. You can see there is a graph that shows that uh, that e-residency top by residents, the most residents are from Germany. Second is Finland. India is number 12. So if you want to know how, how have the residents from India, let's say resident, let's say citizens of India, how has it developed? Then you can see that most of them, every every dot here is a is a month, how many residents came during this month. And this line is kind of a trend line. So you can see in 2018, 2019, there was a real boom from India, people coming in, and that's going down recently. So now it's now it's this is share of applications. So now it's around 3% of applications are coming from, from India. Or well, new e-residents per month. This shows you that, that you see how, my, how many new e-residents, over 100 e-residents came in by, in 2018. In 2022, there is 25, 20, 25, 20, 20 to 30 e-residents coming in. Or how many companies they have created. So India, 20% of e-residents from India have created a company in Estonia. This is number 12. It's by top by e-residency. But the top by, re by residency. Companies created by citizenship. It is number 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 10, actually, in top 10. Or how many companies have created during the world, during the during the year by citizen and by residents, by citizens and by residents. So this kind of 
report, I automatically let all create every month. It's only one button for me and it creates it for all the countries. And this is what, what the people who are, who are working here, what they can look at any time or people who are working together with e-residency companies who are working together with e-residency, they can have a look every, every month and see what kind of trends there are, how are different countries doing and so on and so on. So this is one use of one use of 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 uh, our markdown, which we are going to go through today. Then there is one thing I want you to know is you can create books in R. So if you go to address called bookdown.org, org, bookdown.org, then you will see there are a number of books of R. Geocomputation is R, R graphics cookbook, second edition. Uh, Booktown, authoring books and technical documentation with R Markdown, specifically about today's topic. Introduction to data science. Blockdown, how to create blocks with R. A lot of books, they are all freely available and they are all written in R. They are all written in R Markdown. So you can create your own books. You can also create you can also create uh, scientific articles with R. For example, and don't do it with me right now, I'm going to show you something, something amazing, especially if you are, if you are in academic field. And I, I think most of you are in, in academic field. Now, if only my mouse would work and I could close this. La, 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 this is a problem. So, for example, Look at this, what I'm doing. Don't do it with me because you cannot do it with me right now. I'm going to create a new R Markdown document and I'm going to say, say that it is from template. And this template, and from here, I'm going to, for example, I'm going to, to select. What will I select? A lot of options here. Let's say I am going to publish my. My, my, my article in Springer Journal. So I'm, I'm selecting this template and now I'm clicking OK. And now it gives me a template. Here I write, this is, this is my amazing article subtitle. Can't get better than this author. Let's make index sepo author. Then there are these, all this abstract. What a wonderful article. And now I'm going to save it. And no, why does it save it now? Well, I'm going to knit it. I'm going to press one button. What the? Why doesn't it work? Now it works. So, and see what happens now. It gives me automatically this article formatted in the, in the way how, how Springer articles should be formatted. It gives me the topics, the index, except for my author, introduction, section, title, graphs, it, it does it references, it does everything, it does everything that you that you would go crazy doing in Word. It does it automatically. So this is another way to use our markdown. Now going to close this, and there are a number of different different templates available which you can use. And this is what we are going to to learn today or study today how to create this kind of uh, R markdown documents and how to automatically create reports, how to, how to create your, your, your uh, I don't know, your thesis if, if necessary now. Now, what I want you to do is first, let's create a new file, new file R script. I'm going to save it as session eight.r, but we are not going to use it very much today. So first, Let's, if you have PRC already, summary PRC, if you have PRC already, then let's write, let's save this PRC. Let's save it as a, 
ta 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 it's okay. Others as well? It, it, it's clear. It's, I, I can see it clear. Yeah. I can see it clearly. Good. It's fine. So if you do not have PIAC, then first read it in. PIAC is read CSV, HTTP, www.ute, till the ESEP of PIAC.csv. If you do not have PIAC in your, in your, in your, uh, in your, uh, in your in your environment. La, la, la. <laughs> la, 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 la. You paste that in the in the can you paste that in the in the chat please? What? Uh, could you copy that uh, that yeah, um exactly. that on the I chat? You copy it into the chat. Now, if I can only open the chat somehow, it is that uh, the Zoom is actually it is not so user friendly. It is not so friendly for me now. More chat. Now I can see the chat, and I copy this code to the chat. Now, so first run this code. Oh, sorry, 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 I copied it wrongly. This is Estonian language PR that I copied it to you. Let's do it. PR ENG. I'm going to copy it to the chat again. I'm going to copy it to the chat again. Otherwise, you will get it in Estonian and you can do anything with this. And then let's write it to the to your own computer. Write CSV PR. What it does, it, it writes it into the files. If you go to Files pane in top in the right bottom, then you will now see this is the folder where all your files are. During uh, this, this is a folder of this of this project, and all the files related to this project in this folder. And you should uh, what did I do now? And 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 this should, should create you see this this should create biarc.csv into this folder. And why did I do it? Because we want to because because I will tell you it in a moment. We will need this file in a second. Now Let's create, if this is done, if you have read the PRKIN and then written it into, the, into your files, then let's create our first R markdown file. And to create an R markdown file, what you need to do is you need to open file, new file, but not R script now, but R markdown. File, new file, R markdown. Love is in the R. If you have not fallen in love with R yet, if 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 it, if if you haven't fallen in love with R yet, then today is the day to do it. So be prepared. File new file R markdown, and it might ask you now at one point that do you that you need to install a new version of our markdown click yes install a new version of our markdown or some library and let's write or put a title to it let's title p let's type let title it session eight for example and then there's author let's put some author there for example i will be put myself as author you put yourself as author and then 
and then th thank you, Muhammad. And then date, you can use the current date if you if you want, so that it automatically updates its current date. And let it be HTML, and then OK. So file. We, we leave it as a document, the pre-selected on the left side as a document. File, new file are marked down. Yes, document. Yes, pre-select document. Then title, author, and OK. You can also create presentations and stuff with our markdown, but right now let's create a document. And OK. So now it create, gives you, uh, have you all done it? I give you some time to do it. I have a question. So, like, as you made the template of Springer, so uh, all the templates are available in R, or we need to download like the ones which are not available. You need to load in. Uh, you need to download a library called Articles. So let me let me let me show you. you. So if you want these templates to be available for you, then what you need to do is install packages. Install packages. R articles this is the package that you need so all the journals will be uh, loaded like uh, not all the journals available there of the world but there are the most used ones of so many 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 different journal journals not not everything in the world, but many many have this. Many have their, their many many are there. So if you install packages articles, then if you now create file new file new file R markdown, then you can see from template and you can see all these kind of uh, article templates which are available. Not everything is available, but but many many are. But okay, let's let's leave these articles for a later time. Now. When you, if you are, if you created this R markdown document, then you can see there is title, author, date, output, and 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 then some kind of it is like a like a skeleton of a new R markdown document. Now you have to save it. Control S, save it, and I'm going to save it as session eight, and it is it will automatically add .rmd R markdown. It will automatically add this. RMD on, on, on top of it. So please save it. And now, now when you click knit, when you click knit, do you see this knit button here? There's a knit button here. When you click knit, then what it does, it creates an R Markdown document. For you, it opens it in a new window. It opens a new window an HTML document, which has a plot in it, which has a, some kind of table in it, which has a link in it, but this does not matter. We are going to do this all ourselves in a second. Now, if you want it to open in viewer pane, just like me, just like it, it shows it me that it doesn't open in a new, 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 new window, but it opens in pane. Then what you need to do is you need to, you see there is this, this what this is next to this knit, next to this knit is, is this, uh, gears, gears is there. And click on this gears. And 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 put this preview in viewer pane. You have right now preview in window by default, but put it in preview in viewer pane. So clicking this gear next to it and preview in viewer pane. And now when you need it, now when you need it, then it should open it in this viewer pane, the, the, the file.
does it does it open in your pain? Do you still have some trouble? I want you all to be with me right now when I I'm going to continue. Yeah, it worked. Yes. Sorry, sorry. Can I just take it back a little? Um, arrow markdown, documents, presentation, or templates. Which did you ask we should go for? Document, right? New folder, arrow markdown. Then, mm -hmm. then okay. just title to it, and then okay. Okay, we shouldn't change the title. You you can put any title you want. You can. Put, okay. I put session eight. Okay, okay, thank you. And then okay, and then save the file. Okay, thank you. La 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 la. Now, what I want you to do is this R markdown document. I want you to delete everything from this R markdown from line twelve. From line the 12, I want you to read everything below it so that you would have just this upper part here. What the upper part means, it is, this is title, author, date, output. This is actually, this is not all markup. This is yet another markup language. Do not touch this part. Do not touch it. But, but we are going to write now something in the R markup, in the empty R markup document. And our markdown, it is this markdown language that it uses. It is, it is very common uh, language in markdown. Our markdown is a common language. It is, it is used in many, many places, in, in many cases where you need markdown. It is opposite of markup. Like, for example, HTML is, is hypertext markup language. You can do everything with markup. You can, you can create every kind of stuff. Markdown just defines the basic the basic, uh, uh, the basic formatting, it defines the basic formatting, but it is not what you see is what you get, like Microsoft Word or OpenOffice, uh, OpenOffice, uh, this, uh, this writer. It is, let me, let me show you. If you want to create, a, if you want to create a topic, not topic, what is it now? Topic, subject, first, level heading heading then heading one would be hashtag then space and heading one let's see this is my main heading if you want to create the second level heading then two hashtags this is second level heading to again, again, put, let's put to 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 this uh, two new lines next to it. And now, when you knit it, now when you knit it, then you see it gives you all marked on document where is your main heading and second level heading. Now, then again, two two lines and. Now you can write regular text. Couple of things to note. Note, okay, let's say first. Uh, if you need a new paragraph, then you need two two new lines dot so to create a new paragraph you need one new line and two new lines one new line is not enough you see if i only only create one new line here one this return then it it is it is the same as no new lines at all your new paragraph comes only if you if you if you leave one empty line between the paragraphs. Okay, sorry, let me call draw you back a little again. I thought with this hashtag, it's supposed to be a comment, but it's appearing, in, it's printing. How come? In our in our language. Sorry. In our language, it is it is uh, it is uh, a comment 
But right now we are in R Markdown, and I'm going to show you how to add our our language, our language uh, chunks here in a second. But right now we are writing Markdown, not all. It is Markdown. Chewing. Okay, so uh, in essence, you're trying to say uh, in Markdown, this comments does not apply. Comments does not apply in Markdown. Is that what it's exactly understand? Exactly. This is a different language now. I will I will soon add all code into this markdown. But now I am not writing writing all code, but I am writing markdown code. And this one, oh. what, yes. So this is so regular. One, one last thing. Yours is appearing. Mine is not appearing. So what what am I not doing? Uh, what is not appearing for you? It's not printing. Just the way yours is printing or publishing. If you knit it, if you write, if you push this knit button. Okay. Okay. Button. It's when I clicked on the knit button, it's it sends me to a folder. Like I have to create a name to save it. Is that the proper thing? What does it do when you put when you click the knit button? It's opening up a file name so that I should create a file name where to save it. Yes. Yes. You need first to save this file, Control S. Okay. First, you need to save it. Name it something like session eight or something, something else. Okay. Then, save, then press knit. Okay. Okay. Well, good. Thank you. It should work. Um, yeah, it's okay. So using the R town, we created this template. How to make a connection between this template with the R studio? Uh, now I didn't understand the question very well. Yeah. So I, I repeat the question. So we created this template using the uh, uh, this R Markdown. Yes. This is a new template. How to connect it, this template with the R Studio codes? With R codes. I'm going to show you it in a second. Okay. In one. Right now, I'm going to go through the basics of Markdown, and then I'm going to add. Then I'm going to add all the required all the all the oh, i'm believe me i am going to show you that okay i'll add into it as well perfect okay good so now if you want to create bold text then bold text is made like this two stars bold text is made like this two stars between two stars if you need italic, then italic is bit, 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 between one star, one stars. Control S and knit. So, and you see that you have now bold text and italic text. Then if you need to, to create something like one, two, three, how is it called? One, something, two, something else, three, another thing. Then And then always remember to leave one white space between here and knit. And you will see that it will give you the, 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 the list. Chering, you asked me something in the private message. Did you did you catch up with us or not? No, after you installed the markdown, I, yeah, I missed on few of your lecture. So when you after you have installed the markdown, then create file, new file, all markdown. Add any kind of title to it and click OK. Uh, 
uh, and then save it, control S, and then knit it. Knit here. And if you want it to, if you want it to show here in the viewer pane and not in a new window, then here is the gear. And clicking on this gear, you can select preview in viewer pane, and it will show it to you here in this pane. My mine is showing just on that under the nix right? Needs to HTML, needs to P, uh, PDF, needs to what? So there's I'm not saying this review. Um, then there's a needs directory, document directory, project directly, current working directory. It's so not appearing like yours. You need to save this file first. When you're on the file, then first save it and then need it. I thought the file, the save option is not is not highlighted. It's only save us that is highlighted. You, you see, there is this save dialog or this uh, floppy disk or did I have misunderstood you? Um, that's what I'm saying. The save option is not highlighted on my system. A save option is not highlighted or which yes. option? This save current, the way yours is, when you click it, you can, you can, you can actually save. Mine is not, is not, um, is not, is not highlighted. I can't, I don't have that liberty to save at the moment. It's not activated. That should be the word kind of. Okay, can you repeat? So, well, do you have this knit option? Yes, I do. And when you click? I have the save, I have done, I have the save option, right? Okay. But I'm not able, I can see it on my system, but it's not, it's not, uh, it's not, um, I'm trying to look for the words to use. It's not editable. It's not editable. Yes. But if you click this knit, then what happened? I think the file oh. is already saved. I have already saved the file, so mine is not uh, showing as well. Uh huh. If I click the knit, that's a drop down arrow on knit. I can see knit to HTML, knit to PDF, knit to Word, knit with parameters. You are clicking, you, you just need to click the knit. You are clicking that option, like that small, uh, you can see this black thing that is showing you. If you just click the net, then you can see it in the viewer pane. It's it's opening a new a new page for me. Can it's you not... can you can you share your screen with us? Uh, if you want to, if you want to, if you want it not to open a new page, but in viewer pane, then see this gear. Do you see this gear? What I'm showing now? Yes. Now click next to it, and then review in viewer pane. Oh, okay, okay, and, okay. And it is okay I've, I've, if it is showing in different window. It is just. I've seen it. Thank you. Showing the same right. thing in different window. And now, when you have this review in viewer pane activated and ignited, then it should be. Then it should be. Uh, yes. So it should be here. Um, it's okay it... now. Thank you. Is when you have a problem as well? No, 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 I'm good. I'm saying that maybe we can continue and if you have no okay. problem, you can type in chat and maybe we can help. Okay. I will, I will, I will, I will continue. So this uh, what what's the point is of markdown language is that it gives you minimal numbers of, of editing options. And and then you have this kind of you have uh, in a separate place you have this CSS file or whatever, which which does takes care of all the, you know, ed, not editing, all the, how big this uh, heading should be, or what font it should be, or something like this, but you write normal text like this. So, for example, if you want to have a footnote, then footnotes are like this. This, I don't know how to call it, and then, this is my footnote. Dot and dot. And again, save and knit, and you see you have a footnote. 
this is my full name. So there are this minimum minimum number of of things to to you can edit and you can you can uh, you can change, but at the end of the day you will you will get a nicely formatted book or nicely formatted article or nicely formatted blog post or, or, or whatever. Now, how to add R code into it? To add R code into it, then you see there is this green green button with a small C on it. Can everybody see this button, I hope, where my mouse cursor is right now. When you click on it, then it provides you a, a, a selection, R, bash, D, free, Python, LCPP, CQL, or stand. Select all from here. What is the difference between R and R Markdown? R Markdown is, is uh, it's, it's a Markdown where you can add R very easily. But at the end of this lecture, you will understand it because now we added an R section into this code. I'm going to remove this section and I'm going to add it again. So this C, insert the new code chunk, R. And now you can add all code into that into that text. For example, and do it with me. Let's load library tidyverse. Let's load library tidyverse. Control S. And let's need it. And you see, when you knit it after this writing this library tidyverse, then it shows you the code library tidyverse, and it shows you the message what this tidyverse would show you. That the attaching packages, blah, 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 blah. In many cases, you do not want to show this message, or you do not want to show your code. Then, and look at me carefully now, look at this little gear on top of this library tidyverse. Look at this little gear here modify chunk options and let's click on it and let's say show warnings let's click on twice on it so that it does not show warnings show messages let's click twice on it so that it doesn't show messages and apply so let's click on this gear on the top left of the gray area Top right on the gray area, gray area. And let's uncheck show warnings and uncheck show messages. And if you write apply, if you now click apply and now knit it. Then you see it shows you library tidyverse, but it doesn't show any warnings or messages anymore. Now, let me let me let me continue with this. So let's load in some data. Now let's load in some data. And and to 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 load in some data, you again add a new R chunk. So so to again add a new R chunk. So there is two ways to add an R chunk. Is Control Alt E. If you click Control Alt E, Control Alt Alt E. So if you click this Control Alt E, then it automatically adds, adds an R chunk. Two ways. One way was to in this top top corner here insert R chunk, 
Another way is control alt e. And let's write, let's load in the data. So let's say PR is read.csv, PR.csv. And next line, for example, summary of PR dollar income. So I, re I wrote two lines into this R, R code chunk. Note that R code chunk always starts with, with this three. Uh, three apostrophes, then R, and it ends with these three apostrophes. Now, a couple of things. Do not touch these apostrophes. If I would write by accident something here, for example, A to, to this line, then it doesn't understand anymore that this R code chunk ended, and everything will be screwed. So do not touch these three, 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 these, uh, three apostrophes. Not the beginning. If I would write something here, then it doesn't understand again that this is a code chunk. But first, let's read in PIAC like this, because I hope you all saved PIAC from the internet in the previous, previous, previous code. Again, I'm going to write this previous code to, to the chat. If you did not do it yet, then run it in R, run it in R. And then, uh, but if you did it, then it is saved, uh, it saved the PIAC CSV into your folder. And now when you run it, then see what it does. La, 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 la. It shows you the code again. PIAC is read CSV, PIAC CSV, summary of PIAC income, and then it shows you the summary, what it got, you know, the summary of PIAC income. Now, in most of the cases, in most of the cases, you do not want to show the code actually to your reader. Only when you write, to the, you know, uh, Frank. Okay. So, create the new R chunk and write into this this PIAC is read CSV PIAC CSV, and then this summary. Write write this into a new chunk. Write this into a new code chunk. To create a code chunk, you would go into this text and press Ctrl Alt E, or click on top, insert R, insert R. And when you have written this code chunk, and then you knit this document again. Then you see that it will show you it will show you this code in the document in the viewer and the result of what this what this summary did. Frank, how is us now? Now, in many cases, you do not want to show your code. You only want to show the result. So, Indrik, I'm sorry. Uh, it, it gives me an error. It says the system cannot find the file specified. OK, but then make sure that you have written the PR into, your, into, your, into this folder. So make sure you have done this first, this, this part first. Have you done this? I'm going to write it again into the chat. Yes, I've done it. Then uh, you have a, a problem, namely that you didn't open it in project. So when you go to file Spain, okay. to CSV here. Wait, wait, I have to follow your steps. Can you repeat, please? When you go to files Spain, files. Files, yes. Then can you see inside here, can you see piac.csv? Yes, I can see it. Okay. Can you also see this RMD file that you are using here? No. Then you have saved it to a different place. 
Try to okay. save the RMD file, file, save as. Try to save it to the same directory, what you see in the file, file Spain top on top of here. Okay. If not, then instead of read Piak CSV, just write this Piak is read CSV from the internet. Instead of read read Piak CSV, write this Piak is, is from the internet, because then it will work. But then every single time you need it, then it goes to the internet, downloads the file again, and then does the magic. So you can also write here the internet address. Now, if you do not want to show the code, if you only want to show the results, then what you should do is you should click on this gear again, click on this modify chunk options gear again, and you see there is output is use document default. Instead of use document default, you should select show output only. Show output only. Apply. And now when you need it, you see it wrote here into this, it wrote echo is false. And now when you need it, then it doesn't show you the code anymore. It doesn't show you what you wrote as code. It only shows you the output. Please can you come again? So, so in, 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 in this gear, in this gear, you, 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 you first click the gear on this code chunk and here output you show that you click that show output only. Show output only and apply and knit. And it only shows you the, what the SAR code managed to do and not SAR code itself. So let's write something into this R code. The summary is okay, but let's let let's 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 find the average income. So for example, I'm going to find that the average income is mean of the arc income and not RM is true. Write it to me. Create the new new data object average income, which is mean of the arc income, so that then RM is true. And now, if you want to write a text, I don't want it to go too fast, but I just can't. It's amazing what you can do with it. Now, now you created this data object average income. And now you can use this in the in, in inside text. So for example, the average income in this data is, and now how to how to add our code in line, you need to add this specific uh, apostrophe, then R, then R income. How to get this specific apostrophe, which is here? You can copy and paste it from here. You see, there are three these kind of apostrophes. You can take one this apostrophe from here, copy and paste it, then write R right after it, and then average income and dot. And it will say to you that the average income in this data is 899.6, blah, 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 blah. Now, usually, usually you do not want to have this many points after comma, you know, this many decimal points, decimal, whatever, decimals to show. So let me round it. You can round the average income here in this go chunk or here after this out. I'm going to say that round and after around this average income this round. What kind of error are you getting, friends?
did you create this average income? And now did you put this R and round and then the same R average income, the same object that you created? Only mistake you could have gotten here while you got an error is that you have made some kind of type of somewhere. So this is how inline our code works. You, 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 you do some calculations, you do some calculations in, in the R code chunk, then you find some data objects, for example, and here you, you can actually write an R code here as well, but I only wrote a little bit R code here, I only wrote round, round, round here. So, and when you knit it, then it writes this average income is 900, it rounded it, and then and, and you can you see when when your data new data comes in then you just put a new data into PIAC CSV and everything in your text all the values in your text and everything be updated automatically now what about graphs and stuff now let me remind you how we were creating graphs I'm, I'm going to create yes so if you want to have one if you, so there is question is there an argument to control decimal in round so if you want two decimals then two comma round average income comma two and now it will give you the 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 899.21 there is one more thing i want actually to to know for example in this round command that many people do not know you can round with negative numbers and this is something that is quite useful sometimes so r round and now i'm going to try and write three four five six seven comma me minus two and see what this does Pazant, uh, did you did you do this did you load in pr Did you create this average income data object? So, and now this data object, this average income data object that I created, I am showing it here in this R code environment. So it is, it is this, it, it is this apostrophe then r then space and average income and again this apostrophe so that it is between these apostrophes this this text here then it knows that it has to run r inside here and then it should show you the average income in in line now Look at what I'm doing now. I'm doing round of three, four, five, six, seven, and putting this minus two as an argument here. And when you need it, when you see what value it, it gives you, then it, 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 you see, it, it writes you, well, I didn't want this. Okay. When something like this happens to you, that you see that, that these kind of values come in these scientific notations, like 3.46 to the power, to, 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 and then this means that it is plus 10 to the power of four. Then what to do? When you don't want this kind of, uh, this kind of scientific notations in your text and you usually do not want, you write options, options. Sky pen is, for example, nine, 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 nine. What this means is that R do not show me scientific notations, show me 
the numbers as they are human readable. And you see what this round to minus two does. It rounds it to, to two zeros. It rounds it to 100. And in many cases, actually, it, it does not make sense to, to present to your clients or to whatever. It doesn't make, make sense to present the numbers to the last decimal, you know, or the last number, last digit. You want to show the millions, for example. You want to show how many hundreds of thousands it is. You want to round it up. I don't know. There is Sven, there is actually no. I, I wrote nine. I wrote five nines here now. I don't remember how many I actually needed. You need to write the big numbers there. Into this option, options, sky pen, nine, 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 nine. Yes, Charlie, if you write, if you would edit CSV file or update a CSV file and then run knit again, then it reads this file again, it updates everything. <laughs> Because you are not writing any number here, you are writing that 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 this is this option this which comes from Mia, from Piak. So I am creating a new a new R chunk by Control Alt E. Control Alt E creates a new R chunk. And now let me remind you how to create graphs. Now. When you create a graph, then it was like this GG plot data. So data is the arc. AES, let's say X is, is, is H, Y is numeracy. Plus geom smooth. Let's see how the number of goes goes worse when you are when you are when you are getting older. And now let me knit it. Why I'm not doing it in one chunk, uh, Charlie, is because you know I want to write some text in between the chunks. So I write some text, then I create a new chunk, then I then I then I the new chunk does something, for example, this graph. Now I write some next text, then I write a new chunk that creates the next graph. And you see you have this PG block call, then some kind of message, and then the graph. Now you do not want to see the message or no, you do not want to see the ggplot code. Now remind you, you click again, you click on this modify chunk options. You click on this modify chunk options, you will remove this show warnings, you will remove this show messages. And here in output, you say that show output only, show output only in output. And apply and Knit and you have this, you have this graph there. But I think it's time for 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 a ten minutes of pause. I the time has come so quickly that I have forgotten about this. But let's back, get back at page fifteen, okay? Let's get back at at, at fifteen. Then we have okay. Thank you, Inder. And let's continue now. Let's continue now, everybody. So what you can try now, what you can try now is, is click on this knit, but not don't click on knit, but knit, but click on the little triangle next to knit and knit to word, knit to word, and see what happens. Did it work for you? Yes, beautiful. So you can also need to word. And now you do not you do not have PDF installed 
uh, this PDF, but for PDF, you need a LaTeX installed. For PDF, you need LaTeX installed. So you cannot work with it right now, but if you click on, again, this, this small, this small thing and need to PDF, then it actually tells you what you need to install. You you need need to install tiny tech, or it depends on your system. For me, it works. It creates a nice looking PDF, but for you, it does not work because you do not have LaTeX installed. But if you install it, then you can create PDFs as well. It we have to install like install dot packages latex, like it is a package. Yes, there is actually a package that uh, that installs you all the LaTeX that is necessary. But it is a very big package. It is something like, I don't know, 70. It's a big package. It's a couple of hundred megabytes. So don't install it right now. Install it later. But you need you need this uh, package if you, if you want to use this articles package. If you want to do this articles, then you, then you need it. It needs a whole. It's not LaTeX PDF. It's it. It needs a whole. It needs a whole LaTeX uh, LaTeX library. And now to to work further, then click on the click click on this knit to HTML again. Click on this knit to HTML again because otherwise it tries to to always do what you last did after uh, as PDF or 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 doc or whatever. Now uh, just as a note. With doc files, for example, you can give it as a you can give it a template file, a doc template file. You can give it as an input, and it creates this doc file which looks exactly like the template. You know, which you have you have all these uh, you know the headings look I don't know the Arial fourteen points and so on. If you create this template file, then you can create everything uh, by the by this template that it all automatically automatically it formats it like this template. In HTML files, you can add a CSS file. So it automatically formats it so that it looks like, you know, that like you want it to look like. In PDF files, it's a little bit harder, but you can create these templates that will create you automatically format your PDF files again. Now, there are a lot of things to add here, actually. This is the basics of our markdown. It's not so hard. It is actually not so hard at all to create an R markdown file. But there are many things that you can change here. For example, you will you will change these. I am I am I am now. You, do you see where I am now? I am I am this. I am inside this R R echo false message false warning false code. And I am adding something here. I'm writing comma. And now you see automatically when you click tabulator when you click tabulator here. Then it adds this that what you can change here. What kind of parameters can you add here? So, for example, I am adding fig dot cap is, and and inside the quotation marks, this is the. I don't know what it is. This is the H numeracy draw file, controls and things. So you see what it does. It adds a caption. Now it runs a little bit time for you. Again, if it if it tries to show you a doc file or a PDF, then go to this little 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 uh, arrow here and click need to HTML. And then it adds then it adds a caption to the figure. So you can change many things. Many things here in this in this in this part but be, be very careful because if you if you screw up something here then everything stops to work for creating tables there are many many packages one of them one easy one is is knit of many many functions knit of, Cable. So cable from Knitter, from package Knitter, there is there is there is function cable that you can use for tables. For example, now and let me I am going to create a new R chunk again. Control Alt E. Control Alt E. A new chunk. 
And here, let's do something. Let's find, I don't know. Let's find. Let's find, well, I don't know, average numeracy by, by education, for example. So the arc, let's say, average numeracy, I'm going to create a new, 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 new object, average numeracy. Starting from the arc, and then, Let's group by group by education variable. And then let's summarize. So that that and now let's say that I'm putting it because I want to use I want to use a space in the name average numeracy. That I'm putting it inside these inside these uh, quotation marks is mean of numeracy and now RM is true. And now knitter colon colon cable average numeracy. And now knit. And it shows you the table. But there are amazing packages where you can do every kind of fancy looking tables with R. That, 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 that. HTML tables or XLS or, 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 or Word tables or, or, or something like this. It's that caption as well, I think it was. Caption is my amazing table. And knit. Now, okay, let's look at what, what it does. So many people actually write their code in what is called notebook, notebook format. Now I, I created a file new, uh, this is uh, our markdown, but notebook format. When you, when you write your code, well, okay, let me, let me tell you a little bit about our markdown. So whatever you do in R, you know, when you, when you usually, when you load the library in one tab, let's say you load the library tidyverse here, then in all other tabs, the library would be loaded in, or you load the PR in, then it will be in the environment, and, and you can use it in all other tabs. But our markdown is different. Our markdown is self-contained. What it means is that you need it, it when you knit it, then it creates a new R instance. It, create, it starts from zero. It starts from a clean sheet. So all the libraries that you need, all the files that you need, you need to load them in inside this R Markdown document. You have to think about this R Markdown document like it is completely, completely uh, new, new document. That it, it it's completely clean R session. You have to load everything in here. Now, if you want to run your code up until some place and see what what is going on. Then, for example, I want to run everything before this chunk because I want to know why this chunk is not working. Then you see there is this there is this button here. Do you see this run all chunks above button? Then you click on it 
and it what it's about and it uh, yes you click on it and it runs all the chunks before so you will have everything you know loaded in your environment what has been done before and now you can debug it that how is it going what's going on if you want to run this code chunk then you run it by clicking on this run current chunk and it runs the particular code chunk it shows it to you here as well this results now so again, three buttons. One is for setting the warnings, messages, stuff like this, and whether it should show output, whether it should show code and output, whether it should show nothing but still run the go code or show nothing to the code. Uh, then, of course, you can name the chunks. For example, I am going to name this as as Namavasi underscore table. And why is it why is it why is it good idea to name the chunks? Is because when you knit the document and there will be error in some chunk. Right now there will not be error. Then it tells you in which chunk there is error. For example, let, let me make an error here somewhere. Let me let me make an error here. La 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 la. Ooh -hoo, ooh -hoo. Ooh -hoo. And now knit it. Then it says, ah, the object of who not found. Okay, line 70. I thought that it will tell me that it will also tell me that it was inside this inside this chunk, but it, it just told me that 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 uh, it's line 70. Okay, even better. But in some cases, it shows you in which chunk the error was, or which chunk is the problematic chunk. And if it is not named the chunk, then it just tells you error in chunk number 75. Good luck in finding chunk number 75. You want it to be, you want it to be named. Okay, what else do I want to tell you about this? Uh, tell you about our markdown. Our markdown the basics you know now the basics is as simple as six you write the code in markdown and then you add all chunks sometimes these chunks create a table sometimes these chunks create some data objects that you refer in, in line sometimes these chunks create pictures you can also i was i was gonna ask you that uh, Indrik, if I can interrupt you, um, the lectures you gave us, uh, you you told us one once that you had done them in our markdown. Uh, I, I see that uh, it, it, you inserted some print screens, and now that you mention uh, pictures, uh, how do you, how can you insert print screens? Uh, so you you want if you want to insert pictures from from something else, then and now I might be wrong. I always I always look at it myself i think it is something like this uh, that you first add uh, i don't have any pictures here or do i let me see plots what what are the files How do i have any pictures at gdp png gdp png let's see what happens if i do this No, not like this. Uh, Frank, uh, because you have ggplot2, but no, you need only ggplot without the two. Uh, what if I add now here? And now click. Frank, did you understand? You have one, two too much. It's change plot, not change plot two. Mm, now it created a link to GDP PNG. This was what not what I wanted. 
give me a second. I'm going to tell you it in a, in a, in a minute. I'm a little stupid. Da, 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 da. One more question. Is it possible to change colors also? Like... Uh, colors for what? Uh, like writing heading with red color and text with black color in our markdown. But this is the thing that this would, you would you would change in CSS file now. CSS file, I don't know if you know HTML for HTML files, there is CSS files that you can specifically say that if heading is make headings red, make 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 this heading so big and so on. So this is what you would do in 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 uh, in. in uh, No, let me, let me. This is what you would do in, in, in another file. That in this file you do not do anything, anything to to uh, anything to this is where you just write your code. This is a very clean file. Okay, so this is how you insert pictures. Uh, this this mark then alt text. And then it. Now we're actually a little bit behind time where I wanted us to be. But now, what I want you to do, what I want you to do now, so this is how you add pictures. There is actually, there is actually again. Thank you. If you go to help, help uh, cheat sheets, then there are actually two all markdown cheat sheet. There is all markdown cheat sheet where you can see what you can do in our markdown. For example, you can add, you can add, if you know LaTeX notation, if you want to know LaTeX notation, then you can add uh, uh, all the equations needed. E, E, M, C. Yes, Kamadul, you can, you can, you, uh, you can change CSS files and, or, or even write HTML in there and you can change all the colors you need. So it usually is in CSS. So, but look at what I did now. I, I wrote, if you know, if you know this LaTeX notation, how to write the equations, then it will automatically, then it will automatically create you an equation here. You can write the equations, very nice, nice looking equations, but you need to know LaTeX, LaTeX, LaTeX uh, notation. Now, what I want you to do, I want you to install one package, and the name of the package is Tint. So, so I'm going to open the console or whatever. I'm going to go to packages pane, and I'm going to install a package called install and Tint. T I N T. T I N T and install. I have it installed, so I don't install it. So install package tint. Write in the chat when you're ready. I don't know how long it can take. Packages Indred. Yes. Sorry, I am. Um, it gives me permission denied. Where does it give it to you? It tries to install the package and it says error in installing package cannot open file C, blah, 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 blah. Permission denied. But did you, were you able to install previous packages? Yes. This is very interesting. Then I don't know if it is some kind of. Is it was possible that you have some kind of uh, that some kind of antivirus software is blocking it? Uh, I'm sending the in the chat room the exact message. And this is a problem that I have been facing lately very much. There is this file. Seven one four four five five FF seven D two F that I cannot locate.
There's one solution, but I'm a little bit afraid to tell you the solution because then you will need it. You need you need to do it all the time. So the one solution is you go if you run all as ad, all studio as administrator. So you open start menu, you find all studio, you 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 click it on you know, this right right click it on it and run as administrator. Then this okay. might, but. After this, you always have to run our studio as administrator, always, because then it installs the packages so that they are within administrator rights, and you will always have to run it as administrator. The other way is to, I don't know, delete all this, delete this all, all, all package, all this user one documents all, delete it and install all again, and then install from scratch and hope that it works. Because I don't use Windows myself, I don't know the Windows problems. Usually it works, but but for some people I have seen these permission problems before. I don't really know what 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 would help, what would be the optimal solution here. It shouldn't. Thank it shouldn't. you. So uh, when you can you also like tell a little bit about CSS afterwards? About what? I'm saying that. Uh, can you also let us know a little bit about CSS? uh html code afterwards like how to change the orientation type and everything not not today but whenever you feel like i am i am very stupid in css so i cannot but 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 it's uh this is when you want to create html files but there are but there are many already many packages available okay let me th th show you what so also but now you use you need to have this latex installed then what you could do, you could you could uh, you could install a package called Vita. Vita. And in this with this Vita, you can create your own. For example, I am going to show you a file. I'm going to show you a file in a second. I am going to show you a file. Now, doesn't it look beautiful? How how nice does your how nice does your your TV look like? This is mine, my TV. Isn't it looking nice? When you get this kind of TV, you will immediately want to hire the person, don't you? And this TV is created entirely in our studio. So what you need for this to create this kind of CSV, you need a package called Vita, and 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 then you can create this TV in our studio. Did you you didn't see it? Frank says that he didn't see anything. Let me try to show. Um, I did. I did. Okay, then most of the people saw it still, but I'm going to show it once more. So, Frank, can you see my screen now? So, this is what the fuck? This is how my how my how my how my cv look looks like i think it looks looks pretty nice and professional and and this is how you can create this uh, what you can create in our studio if you install latte and if you install package called vita but now what i wanted you to install was this tint was this tint and i'm going to show you what to do what to do with this tint because i because because charlie i think you said that you can create some class materials with this and i'm going to show you how i create my 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 these these class materials and these materials that you have that you have seen until now 
if you have this tint installed, if you have this tint installed, Tiki, is this now to you are well cannot view just a symbol. I don't know what you are talking about. But if you have this tint installed, then when you create file, new file R markdown, file, new file R markdown. File, new file, R markdown. And now select from template, from template. Then you will have at the, then you will somewhere have this tint is not to HTML. Tint is not to HTML and PDF. You can't take the PDF if you do not have LaTeX installed, but select this HTML. Tint is not to HTML. Select it and wait and click OK. And now it gives you, and now it gives you again this skeleton. But this time the skeleton is enormous. The skeleton is very big because it, 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 it explains you how to, how to use this specific uh, template. Save it, control S, save it as, I don't know, I save it as test. So you need to first save it. And after you have saved it, you can knit it, knit it. I think it takes a little bit time. La 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 then you will you will notice that it is very very similar to my to my course notes and this is exactly what it is i am using this tint package the pdf version to create my course notes this is this comes from tufta tufta is a is a very well known uh, this kind of tufta is a very well known uh, data graphics guru and his books are always like this that they are, you know, you cannot need it to Word. This you cannot need it to Word. This is only available for, for PDF and HTML. Word is not able to do this kind of stuff. So this Tufta is, is a very well-known data guru, data, data visualization guru, and his books look like this, that it, they have a very big, this uh, very, it was Tufta, Tufta style. It has a very big, this, uh, what is it in the right hand side? Well, whatever it is. And it puts, in many cases, it puts the graphs here in the right side. Sometimes it puts the graphs so that, that these margins, you can add anything on the margin. You can also create graphs that are full width. And, 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 and uh, you can write the side notes. You cannot write two words as references, so it's all the citations inside tables. It, it is responsive actually. So if I make it smaller, then the side notes go into the text. If I make it smaller, then the side graphs go into the text. So it is responsive as HTML. You see, now it is here inside the text. When I make it bigger, then the graph goes next to the next to the text. And I usually create PDFs with this. Uh, I like to do my course materials, everything with this. And and this skeleton itself, it 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 explains how to do everything, how to how to how to put things into the 
side notes, how to put things, how to put graphs onto the side notes, how to create headings, margin figures, all this arbitrary margin, con margin content, margin contents. You can imagine, you can see it from here how it is created, and and then you will do it. And then you can you can send it to your to your students. It's it's really 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 I I love this style. I have used this style a lot. Actually, there is a Tufta package available as well, but I like this Tint a little bit better. Tint has Tufta, which has a, some some small changes made to it. So it uses Roboto Roboto condensed uh, Roboto condensed uh, font. And some some other 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 things. What else you can do is with uh, R Markdown. You can create you can create slides. If you create file new file R Markdown, then there is presentations. And now you can choose: do you want HTML presentations, PDF presentations, PowerPoint presentations? And you can in Markdown create the presentation. So, for example, if your presentation uses some data that frequently changes, uh, when you, you create some data, when you have when you have slides using some data that frequently change, then you create these slides once. You just replace the data. You click knit, and it changes the slides. You know, new graphs with new data and everything, everything like like. Uh, like, like 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 this so i select now i'm select some i don't know slidey slides i don't know what it is i have never used it but it also always it, it gives you the it gives you the uh, it always gives you the skeleton from which you can go where well, from which you can you can go further that that uh, and then when you knit it then you have slides first save it of course first save it save it then knit it and it will give you it will give you give you slides i have a question like in when you were showing your uh, markdown file there the uh, the graph of india like indians in Estonia, estonia so the one that you showed uh, during the class. So there you had option that you were clicking the button and then the graph was changing, like uh, one line was getting dim. And when you click the other line, the, the, uh, it, uh, so there was manipulation with the graphs that you were just clicking the button and the graph were also responding like that. How did you do that? Uh, what I did is I used, I used a library called I used a library called uh, where am I now? I used a library. Okay, I don't know even what do you mean uh, that I had this uh, different tabs in different tab tabs, or that I like so, when you were showing the graph. Mm -hmm. So the graph, like uh, of like the way you were clicking the tab, and the graph was also changing. That the same graph was changing. So what I used here, I used. Uh, I used, I created R Markdown again. Yes, but, uh, you showed that you created that in R Markdown, like the one that you, uh, the one for Indians, like you draw the how many Indians have business in Estonia. Yes. That file I'm talking about. I used Flex Dashboard. So there is a package called Flex Dashboard, which helps you to, to, to create this, this kind of dashboards. So this was uh, I used flex dashboard and 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 here it gives you immediately again uh, it gives you immediately again a skeleton but if you search for flex dashboard then you will see how ma how many options it has uh, this dashboard and it it, it 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 allows you to create all these tabs and stuff and then the put different different graphs of different different tabs and exactly, Kamarul, you asked about Plotly. I am using Plotly quite a lot. So, for example, in this test, let's say uh, this session eight RMD. When I when I made this graph, then actually I can write it into P. I can 
category. I can write it into some kind of data object. For example, P is ggplotsys. Now I'm loading Plotly, library Plotly. And now I'm doing, how was it, ggplotly P. And knit. And what this ggplotly does? It, it creates uh, interactive interactive graph out of ggplot graph. Let's see what happens. If I go to the graph now, you see it, it is it shows me the H and numerous. It shows me the stuff here. If I would put into this John Smooth, for example, I put that I put that A yes color is is gender. And I'm knitted again. Now I'm I'm going to put both men and females into this graph. Then this library plotly it creates a plotly graph of ggplot graph. And and now look at now. Now there are there are men and and women here. And but where are they? okay? So when I click on this female. Here, yeah, then it only shows me men. I, I can remove all of them. I can only show females. So clicking on this, on this tabs, I can, I, on this, I can move, make it, make it more or less interactive. So yes, this plotly, plotly is a nice library with ggplot objects when you create, uh, when you create HTML, HTML output. Okay, changing fonts. Yes. Uh, well, in, in, in most of the cases, in most of the cases, you would change fonts in this CSS file. Uh, wherever is this, you create HTML file, you can, you put the CSS file and then you, you, you change it. But, but for graphs, if you, if you want to use graphs, then with different font fonts, then I would, I would suggest HLBL teams. This 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 library, HLBL Teams library, and and there are very good default fonts for graphs. There is one thing I want to show you. One more thing I want to show you, and this is about parameterized reports. We have a couple of minutes left, so. I can write here params. Okay, I, okay, I will, I will, I will show it next time because we actually are out of out of out of time. But you can search for parameterized reports, and this is very very important topic: how to create automatically these reports when you want to create one same report for every single I don't know country or or, or sector or whatever. But for now, I'm going to stop the stop the recording i'm going to stop the lecture and i'm 